Okay, I'm suitably fueled. Suitably. Blah, blah, blah. This is why I need this because I don't speak English unless I have it. Hi guys, Michelle, and today I'm having a bit of fun because I'm doing a top five Doctor Who moments. Doctor Who means the world to me, and this, my dears, is why. So at number five, we have I am telling you. This is the moment that we find out who River Song is. There has been about three series before this she's been in and out of and we haven't known who she is. She's this mysterious woman who just knows everything about the Doctor. He doesn't know who she is. And he's just like, right, that's it, I've had it. Who are you? Tell me who you are. And she takes his hand and she puts it on this crib and she goes, I am telling you. And his face, Matt Smith's face, bursts. He bursts into this giggle that he can't possibly contain. She's like, <laughs> He has this just, he's like, and he starts pointing everywhere, just like you and you and but but, but we, because they've kissed in the past. And he's just like, ooh, but I, but I kissed you and you're, yeah. and we as an audience have no idea what's going on. We don't know who River Song is because it has only been told to the Doctor. We've been waiting two series or three series to find out who River Song is. Now the Doctor knows and we don't and it's not fair and I want to know. So you have all these emotions going through in your head. You have this pure, like fun of watching Matt Smith explode in giggles and then you also have the pure frustration of not knowing who the heck River Song is. Number four. I'm not coming. I'm going home. Donna Noble to David Tennant's Doctor in the Sontaran Stratagem. So this moment is when Donna runs up to the Doctor and she goes, I'm sorry Doctor, I'm not coming. And his face breaks and he starts, he's just like, um, okay, wow, this is this is a bit early. I was going to take you to so many places. I was going to take you to the 15th broken moon of the Medusa Cascade. Please stay with me. And his heart's breaking. And he's just like, you can't, well, okay, um, okay, so we'll take you home. Um, okay, I, uh, you mean you're just going home for a visit, don't you? And she just looks at him and goes, you dumbo, you great big outer space dunce. She was just going home to visit her family. And then she's coming right back. And this, to me, just wraps up the Doctor and Donna's relationship. He is this magical, mystical, great big outer space person who just wants to take her everywhere and, and seduce her into the wonderful things. Come with me, my pretty. I'm going to show you things. And she's just like, oh, you idiot. You are absolute bloody idiot. They're best friends. They're like... She, it's like she's the big sister and he's the younger brother going, look at me, look at me, go on the ventures, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And she's just like, oh, for Christ's sake, why do I have to travel with this five-year-old? I mean, I want to go travelling and I want to see all the things, but he is so annoying. Next up is from a Christmas episode called A Christmas Invasion. It is the aftermath of Christopher Eccleston, Doctor Number 9, turning into David Tennant, Doctor Number 10. It is the whole speech that David Tennant says as he comes out of the TARDIS. There's a whole 40 minutes of the episode where the Doctor just, just is having a nap in some pyjamas and he suddenly just goes, bang, pop, I'm coming out of this TARDIS, I'm so fantastic, do not mess with me. But the best moment in this speech where he's trying to save the world is when he tries to describe the human race. So he's doing this big, long, massive speech going, you can't pick on these people. They're just, they're just humans. I mean, they're little. I mean, from the day they arrived on the planet and blinking stepped into the sun. There is more to see that can never be... Oh, hang on, that's the Lion King. He literally says that. And my brain just went, one, genius. Two, when the heck did the Doctor watch the Lion King? I mean, did he just have a bad weekend and watch all Disney movies? <laughs> so many things went off in my brain. The way David Tennant did that speech was just... <laughs> showed you the doctor he was going to be he was a child and he was bouncing about from different thing to different thing and he couldn't stand still and then he starts quoting the lion king and it's just slightly genius number two give me this one god please give me a day like this one this is from the first series it's christopher eccleston and it's an episode called the doctor dances it was the first two-part episode we ever got it's the empty child and the Doctor dances. It's the really, really freaky one that everybody loves with the kid and the gas mask and the are you my mummy? Throughout the whole series that has been going on so far, everything's going wrong for this Doctor. He's just falling to pieces. And Christopher Eccleston, as an actor, this is one of the moments I fell in love with him because his face just cracks into this wonderful, beautiful smile. And he realises that for once, everything's going to be okay. 
everything is going to go right. He's Everybody's going to live. He does this kind of little speech and he's just like, you want moves, Rose? I'll give you moves. And then he goes, everybody lives. And he does this magical thing with his hands. But everybody lives. You see the doctor that David Tennant is going to be, the doctor that Matt Smith is going to be. Christopher Eccleston plants the seed for the doctor that is to come, for the funny, I'm going to fix this, everything's going to be great, the doctor. And he just, he just switches on a dime. Instead of being this guy who killed everybody and has been walking around in the funk and trying to undo it and trying to be okay, he becomes the Doctor again. It's just a little bit magic. And at number one, it's the reason I fell in love with Doctor Who in the first place. And I suppose it's a collection of moments, but this is the first one that happens. First episode, new regeneration. We've had about 10 minutes of the episode and we've not seen a Doctor at all. All we've seen is this young girl, Rose Tyler, trying to go through her life. Everything's going a bit hinky. She thinks she's about to die. She's pressed against the wall like this and this mannequin is coming towards her and it's going to kill her. And then the camera zooms in on her hand which is out on the wall like that, and his other hand just grabs it. And you see Christopher Eccleston's head, Doctor Number Nine, just pop around the corner and go, run! And then they run down this corridor and he's holding her hand. And it's the running and the holding of hands, but mainly the holding of hands that just makes it perfect for me. It happens throughout the series. It happens with Christopher Eccleston. It happens with David Tennant. It happens with Peter Capaldi. And it happens with Matt Smith. And I imagine it will happen with Jodie Whittaker. The Doctor reaches out and holds people's hands just to say, I got you. Doctor holding hands, but especially that first one when he grabs Rose's hand around the corner, 10 minutes into the series, just sort of makes me bubble up a little bit. So that's it. That's a very long explanation of my top five Doctor Who Happy moments, excitement moments, reasons that I watch this flipping series that just, they give me the collie wobbles in a really good way. They just give me all the feels. I would love to know what your moments are. That if you watch Doctor Who, if you're a fan, what are the moments that just make you go, yeah, this is the reason I watch this series. So hit me up down below because I'd love to know them. I hope you guys are good and you've enjoyed this video. I might be doing more on Doctor Who just because I love it so damn much. Raxicorica Falapatorius. Bye. And he's just like, hun, 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 boo. That was my earring. Ow.